Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Nathan Templeton, fondly known as Tempo by his friends and colleagues, tragically passed away near a walking path in Geelong, Victoria, on April 9th, at the age of 44. As an accomplished Australian news anchor, Nathan left an indelible mark on the world of broadcast journalism, particularly with his passionate coverage of the Olympics. Starting his career at Southern Cross Tasmania before moving to Channel 10 in 2004, and later joining 7 News Melbourne in 2012, Nathan quickly became known for his integrity and charisma on and off the air. His insightful poolside reporting during the Olympics endeared him to viewers and athletes alike, contributing significantly to the public's love and understanding of the sports. Nathan's dedication to his craft was paralleled by his devotion to his family, including his wife Kate Coughlin and their two young sons, who describe him as an adoring father and a wonderful friend. His decision to scale back his on-air duties in 2022 to focus on personal matters speaks volumes about his character and his priorities in life. The news of Nathan's untimely demise has deeply affected his colleagues and the athletes he covered. Seven News Managing Director Lewis Martin highlighted Nathan's importance to the team, noting his professionalism and the deep impact of his loss on those who knew him. Australian swimmer Kate Campbell and the Australian Olympics team both reflected on Nathan's respectful and passionate approach to sports journalism, emphasizing how much he will be missed. Nathan Templeton's legacy as a fair, knowledgeable, and genuinely caring journalist will live on through the countless broadcasts that captured his enthusiasm for sports and his respectful interaction with athletes. Akabono Taro, a trailblazer in the realms of sumo and professional wrestling, passed away at the age of 54 due to heart failure after a prolonged illness. Born Chadwick Haheo Rowan in Hawaii, Akabono achieved international fame as the first non-Japanese-born wrestler ever to reach the rank of Yokozuna, sumo's highest accolade, in 1993. Akabono's sumo career was marked by his rapid ascent to the top, making his professional debut in 1988 and achieving Yokozuna status in just five years. Over his career, he dominated the dohio, the sumo ring, bringing both agility and immense strength to his bouts. His retirement from sumo in 2000, prompted by injury, marked the end of an era. His athletic prowess and towering presence led him to the world of K1, MMA, and professional wrestling, where he became a celebrated figure across multiple combat sports. On New Year's Eve 2003, Akabono's bout against Bob Sapp drew an unprecedented 54 million viewers, showcasing his draw beyond the sumo arena. His appearance at WrestleMania 21 highlighted his crossover appeal and charisma, captivating audiences worldwide. Transitioning to professional wrestling, Akabono had notable stints in AJPW and NJPW, where his rivalry with legends like Brock Lesnar enriched the wrestling narrative. His achievements in AJPW, where he won the prestigious Triple Crown Championship twice, underscored his versatility and skill in adapting to different styles of combat sports. Akabono's legacy is one of breaking barriers and embodying the spirit of a true warrior. He not only excelled in the traditional Japanese sport of sumo, but also embraced and succeeded in global fighting disciplines, making him a revered figure in the world of sports. Paula Weinstein, a pivotal figure in American film and television production, passed away at her home in New York at the age of 78. Born into a family deeply entrenched in the entertainment industry, her career was almost predestined, shaped by the legacy of her mother, television producer Hannah Weinstein, and her father, Pete Weinstein, a journalist. 
Weinstein's professional journey was marked by a series of collaborations with some of the industry's most respected directors, including Steve Kloves, Lasse Hallstrom, and Barry Levinson, helping to produce content that was both critically acclaimed and beloved by audiences. Her influence extended beyond her filmography as she took on a significant role as the executive vice president of Tribeca Enterprises in 2013, where she was instrumental in shaping the landscape of independent film through the prestigious Tribeca Film Festival. Her personal life was intertwined with her professional world, marked by her marriage to producer Mark Rosenberg until his untimely death in 1992. Weinstein's career was not just a testament to her formidable producing skills, but also reflected her resilience and ability to navigate the complexities of Hollywood. Weinstein's death marks the end of an era for those who knew her and admired her work. Her legacy, however, will live on through the films she helped bring to life, her impact on the Tribeca Film Festival, and the pathways she paved for future generations in the industry. Keith LeBlanc, a trailblazer in the world of drumming and music production, passed away at the age of 69. Born in Bristol, Connecticut in 1954, Keith's early fascination with drumming was sparked by watching Ringo Starr. This passion led him to become a formidable force in music, known for his work with the pioneering bands Little Axe and Tackhead. Keith's professional journey took a significant leap at Sugar Hill Records, where he replaced Harold Sargent as the session drummer. His collaboration with icons such as Grandmaster Flash and Mel Mel marked him as a key figure in the early days of hip-hop. He further expanded his influence in the music industry through his work with Tommy Boy Records, contributing to the success of various artists and projects, including Nine Inch Nails' Pretty Hate Machine. Perhaps one of his most groundbreaking contributions was the single No Sell Out, a sample-based release that charted on the UK Singles Chart and was heralded as the single of the week by several major music publications. This track underscored his innovative approach to music, blending traditional drumming skills with new electronic sounds. Beyond performing and producing, Keith founded his own record label, further cementing his role as a creative force in music. He was not just a musician, but an innovator, constantly exploring new realms of sound and production. Keith's legacy is marked by his adventurous spirit and the profound impact he had on the music industry, leaving behind a body of work that continues to inspire artists and fans alike. Fritz Wepper, renowned German actor and television stalwart, passed away in Munich at the age of 82. Wepper's career spanned over six decades, making him a beloved figure in both film and television across the world. Born into a family marked by wartime absence, Wepper gravitated towards acting from an early age, debuting in a production of Peter Pan at just 11. His early breakthrough came with the role of a young soldier in Bernhard Vicky's critically acclaimed anti-war film, Die Brucke, which garnered international recognition, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Wepper achieved Hollywood acclaim with his compelling performance as Fritz Wendel in the Oscar-winning film Cabaret, where he portrayed a German Jew passing as a Christian during the rise of Nazi power in Europe. However, it was his role as Inspector Harry Klein in the iconic crime series Derek, which he played from 1974 to 1998, that turned him into a household name in numerous countries and solidified his status as a television legend. His versatility shone through with his later role as Mayor Wolfgang Waller in Um Himmelswillen from 2002 to 2021, a part that showcased his ability to blend sly humor with a touch of warmth, attracting millions of viewers each episode. His legacy as a cornerstone of German cinema and television is enduring, marked by memorable performances that brought complex characters to life with authenticity and charm.